we're going to have a wonderful time painting an Italian cafe today. I'm starting out with a quick light wash in the distance just to push it back a little. Here's it sped up. I'm using twin rocker paper because I wanted texture and lots of hit and miss areas, but I also wanted some awesome color because it's that bright Italian light. This is on the Cinque Terre, and it's just a standard little cafe. It was really the umbrellas I was drawn to in this one. Umbrellas in that beautiful light. So I'm just laying everything blurred, leaving lots of hit and miss spots. And I'm going to incorporate the people. I just want the idea of, hey, there are people walking around. I don't want detailed people. This isn't a portrait. So they're, they're part of the scenery. Um, I'm using some pyro, pyro red and um, Nicolazzo yellow mixed in a little bit. I'll show you my palette in a minute so you'll see how I've modified these colors very slightly. And that's a bit of nickel azo yellow with a touch of cobalt violet. I'm just laying it blur in and out of place. Here are these wonderful pots right there. Not really, I love how they just have big clay pots everywhere full of flowers and plants and it's very soothing. can see a little bit of my brushwork so it's seeing it from this angle shows you that I'm just letting my brush dance on the paper I'm hitting it but I'm not scrubbing at it I'm I'm barely touching it laying all that color go out but I'm not ever touching it it doesn't get down where I'm grinding the ferrule into it or anything and when I'm bleeding something in, I go in and out and dance around and I have the color, but it isn't even. It's, you know, shadows aren't covered evenly and this shouldn't be either. Now I'm not painting a house. Though when I do, I'm afraid I'm a bit hit and miss there too. So I'm just letting my brush dance around and have some fun. And so that's really three colors, maybe two more pigments, dripped into one wash. And then I will let that dry completely. And that's critical. If you're going to do a very wet wash like that, you don't want to continually go back in and in and in and scrub it to death. You know, you want to finish it. So they have these curtains hanging um, to shade the diners um, when it's the hottest part of the day and I guess protect them a little from the street. But they are this saffron yellow, just gorgeous, bright, orangey yellow. Really, really pretty. So there's yellow curtains and... Um, the pinky orangey colors of the stucco behind them and those deep shadows. There's a lot going on in this painting and you need to make sure that you simplify and, you know, identify what of these elements are the most important ones to you when you're painting it. Because that may not be the same thing as me. In fact, I should hope it wouldn't be. Everyone has a unique view. So they've got the repeat of those umbrellas in the back ground. Um, so they're, they're a little dulled compared to the ones up front are going to be bright white, you know, in those shadows. And those are more oranges and a little bit dulled. Remember I had the cobalt blue and a little bit of the cobalt violet and color wash over that area. So that gives it a little bit of an atmospheric effect. I painted a couple of the details with the rigor. Mm. 
So you can see my palette here, and I'm just playing around with it. I've got dominant colors for each mix, but I am mixing several different colors. And I realize I have told you mix on the um, painting, not on your palette, but there are exceptions to all rules. Um, the trick though is usually beginners will start mixing all of their paints perfectly on their palette and never mix any on their paper. And if you get out of that habit where you let the paint flow together on the paper, you're going to have much, much clearer colors. And you'll notice that when I do mix colors together, I'm still letting them flow a lot on the paper. And I'm not mixing very many at a time. I will take the green and dull it a little with quinacridone rust or azo yellow or cobalt violet, but generally not all three. And so it's just slight modifications of the color. And then I let them flow together on my paper where they should. It's all part of watercolor. And make sure that you don't get muddy colors, but doesn't prevent you from getting muted colors because, you know, there's subtleties in there too that you might want to have. Some shadows underneath those pots. And you'll also know that I don't use, I keep paint on my palette. I paint pretty much every day. So I keep, you see, what you see is what I have. Those are generally all the colors I use. I add them, I try ones out. I say, oh, I'm not going to use that anymore. Um, and change things up a little bit. But generally, this is what I have on my palette at all times but I'll only use a couple of the colors in it. Like this one, I'm not going to use my Van Dyke Brown. I'm not going to use my Burnt Sienna. I'm not going to use Thalo Blue. I'm not going to use Cobalt Teal or, uh, you know, the only red is the Pyrrole Red. So, and that's, that's in this woman's dress right here. Or hint of a dress, right? Don't really know what it is. I'm thinking a couple going out to eat you know, having a nice early evening with the long shadows. But I don't want too much detail in there. I want it to be very subtle because, you know, who knows who the couple could be? It could be you. So when you're painting people like this, you have to restrict the detail. I mean, just restrict the detail like crazy. Um, you have to slap your hand again and again and go back into it because you aren't painting a portrait. And you need to know what direction the shadow is coming from, what direction the light is coming from in the general shape of a human body at whatever pose that they're doing. And since most of the people in this are made up, um, instead of actually in the picture or they were in awkward angles or whatever in the pictures, then, you know, you have to know what a human body looks like. And that's where your portrait painting goes in with your landscape painting. Some cobalt violet, a little bit of ultramarine, kind of deep, dark, those shadows. So a little bit of fussing here. Time to do the curtains just, just a bit more. Add those shadows that really make them look like fabric and you can tell what they are. Just 
So it's modified with just a tiny bit of cobalt violet. Not much, not five different colors, just the right amount. Do most of your mixing on the paper. It's a trumpet vine going around. I don't know what they call it in Italy. Around here it's trumpet vine or cowich because it's all on fences and stuff. And cows, usually at cow pastures. It's really pretty. Some orange flowers that I'll be adding at the end with a tiny bit of gouache to make them pop. But you also have to plan. I like using gouache restricted circumstances, you know where it's going to be beforehand. And it certainly isn't worth painting around a bunch of orange flowers um, doing that whole, during the whole painting. That would be a lot of fussiness. So you can use masking, you can use gouache, your choice. But you don't want to do the fussiness. Just let, this way you can let the paint do whatever it wants to do. I'm using a little bit of dry brush here in the shadows just so it has the texture of the fabric. Now those deep dark shadows where you can see through um, where the curtain loops, where it's hung from. And I'll be doing a gouache for the line that it's hung from later. But here, this is just saying, here are these little gaps in this. A bit more detail on the people. Now this is tricky. The people, they have enough, but since they're backlit and they really are in shadow like that, I want to deepen some of the details in the shadows areas on them. Just make them a little bit darker. I'm going to make the road a little bit darker. I'm going to make them a little darker. So you think ahead to what the next step is. It's just like a chess game, right? You have to see all the way down the board. Plan your moves. Red shoes, of course, with the red dress. What else could there be? Now, all I'm doing is scribbling a little bit here. Hey, there's a menu up there, right? Just scribbling a bit what it is. I remember one of the great things about working with a highly sized paper like um, Twin Rocker is that you can pull up things that you want. So if I want a few more lights in there in the shadows, I can do that. So I'm doing the shadows from the trumpet vine uh, onto the kind of the lights coming through, but the trumpet vine is going around the umbrellas, so the sh those shadows, leaf shadows. And actually this is one of the most interesting parts to paint the whole thing, the umbrella. Still, you have to do it in stages. So now I'm going to darken the street and add some of the texture on the street and some of the lines. They've got some really interesting pavement detail in there. I'm 
deep in the shadows, otherwise they're not going to show up. And I want to blur things like the shoe lines and really everything. I just want, there's a vague form there. And of course they're holding hands. They're going to dinner, right? Ah, romance. <laughs> So the shadows need to show up on top of the pavement lines, obviously. Pavement's there, then the shadows. And it looks a little empty, you know? This is really a time of day when everyone's getting ready to go out to eat um, from the light of the shadows. So the picture I took really didn't have that many people in it. Um, but, you know, I went a little bit more bustling. So add more people. And all I need is little dots in the right shapes. A little bit more darks back here. There's another restaurant. They've got their shadows and stuff like that too. So I'm putting that in. Now the detail in the umbrella, which is going to make it look like an umbrella. Remember, you paint on, on a highly sized paper and you're going to be able to manipulate the pigment more. And don't forget what you're actually painting, what it looks like. So here's little, little umbrella details sped up a bit. Now the white gouache and this and the trumpet vine flowers, I think are the only places I use the white gouache. So that's why I have the, the glowing sparkle is the white of the paper. And that's very important because gouache really gives you a flat white versus a glowing sparkle but it sure does come in handy. Now, another option for this, since it's a very thin line, is you could use a razor blade and not bother with gouache at all. And here is the final painting, a little bit more shadows in the foreground and um, in the house to the upper left, and that's it. I hope you enjoy painting this painting, or at least it inspires you to paint something wonderful of your own. I would love to see it. Um, put it on Instagram or Twitter, hashtag painting watercolor. And please visit my website if, to see reference photos and more information on paintingwatercolor.com. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate y'all. Happy painting.